welcome uh, and I hope okay are we live already okay so welcome to to the last uh, panel of our of our conference uh, sorry for being late again I had we had a bit of a confusion with the time zones uh, but we are good we are all here um, some of us uh, in Riga and some of us joining um, online so um, in the in the recent uh, decades, if you check the political map of the Europe and you are interested in the European elections or any kind of elections, parliamentary, local um, or presidential or, or whatever kind of elections, you would see a rise of the Greens and the big bright green color in West and the North of Europe, but you will see mostly gray color um, in, in Eastern part of the Europe, which meant that either there are no green parties in this region or that they are so, um, so weak that they don't even manage to get into the parliament or in the councils, uh, or well, not, not talking about the other elections. But with the last five years, um, it is clear that the, the process has uh, started and this is changing. We are seeing new green parties being established in this part of the world and not just being established, but they are achieving uh, the change, they are achieving success, they are winning campaigns, they are uh, getting into the parliaments, they are getting into the councils, and when they are there, uh, they deliver uh, the change. Uh, so with this panel, the, the aim is to, uh, is to discuss this um, last few years of the this uh, process that we are we are witnessing the emergence of the green political parties in in this region to to briefly go through uh, the story and the political context of these political parties that are uh, with us uh, today uh, to to talk about the challenges that uh, we are there to talk about the incentives um, that that are there um, and to uh, and to see the patterns that are there because there they are some interesting patterns that we are seeing that that, that is repeating in, in those countries. You know, the way the parties was founded, who were the founders of the party, how this process was going on, who are the electorate, who, who are the biggest voters of this political project and followers of this political project. And also maybe we can uh, stop on the differences between the Western and the Eastern context uh, of the, uh, between the Greens, uh, be that structurally or maybe on a policy-wise. Um, so, and one last thing, we are at the conference organized by CDN and um, um, we cannot we have to talk about the young people because we are, I mean, I think most of us here can be said that even on the panel uh, said that we are young people. Um, and uh, we have to talk about the influence of the young people in this, in, in this, um, in this movement of shaping a new green political project. Because it is, it is very visible if you just look at these political parties, no matter going into depths of the policy. And uh, if you just look at the picture who are in the party, who are the leaders of the party, you will see a very large difference with other political groups where, where you will see more people above 60. Um, and here you will see in the Green Project, you will see much more young people, uh, people coming from the Young Greens, people coming from the youth movements, people coming from CDN or FIG or other uh, youth uh, green organizations from uh, from from Europe. So we will be also talking about that, and I hope you will have some some questions because um, it is important to bring this change and bring this green uh, wave into every country in Eastern Europe uh, because we need it uh, to, to survive on this planet to have more secure, more peaceful, and more democratic uh, region. So. Here we are, uh, we are uh, on the panel uh, with um, Sopa Shobitize from Tsuanebi, the, the newly established Green Movement, which aims to become a political party in Georgia. Uh, Justine Panteleva from uh, Latvia, Progressive. Uh, we have uh, Pedrag Momcilovic from Nidavmo Beograd, uh, Serbia. Uh, we have uh, Stefan uh, Vukmanovic from URA, Montenegro, and we have uh, Koray Doyan Urbar Urbarli from uh, Turkish uh, newly founded Green uh, Party. So, the first question with uh, what we can start is to maybe tell a story of, of the 
political movement or a party, um, and how the party was founded, what, uh, what were the political context, and why was there a need to, to have a new uh, green political uh, party. Because if, if, if you see these countries also, there have been some green political projects uh, from the late 80s or from the 90s or 2000s, and there have been some green political projects. Um, so this would be my first question to, to all of the panelists, uh, to, to give us the story of their movement and a political party and to give us a political context and why was there a need to, uh, to found a green political party. And maybe we can start with, uh, with Justine uh, and then, yeah, let's continue from there. Hello, everyone. Um, it's so lovely to be here, um, seeing so many people in uh, NICE because I've been with CDN for quite a while. I was working in an alternative urbanization working group. Uh, that, uh, CDN is one of the reasons I got more political, uh, actually. Um, I was so inspired um, by uh, activists in Eastern Europe that I had to re-evaluate re my own privileges of, uh, of the local context and the reasons why I was avoiding and um, yeah, avoiding going into politics. Uh, so I've been uh, quite of events uh, in Eastern Europe, and so I'm happy. So it's finally CDN is uh, here in my city. Um, the political context, uh, just like briefly, we know a lot of speakers. Uh, the same goes as uh, the story of uh, in every Eastern European country. I say even even worse. So for for us. Um, I think what I, how I can um, uh, generalize Latvian politics, it's always been you, you, a, poli uh, a business project for, for uh, um, uh, oligarchs and interest groups. And then they had quite of, uh, you know, uh, different niches, how they fill it. Um, and for example, Greens, uh, and they've always been the former farmers party, and they've always lobbied. Uh, they've had um, oligarch behind them, and there is always lobbied for big agriculture business. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, we have this post-Soviet uh, context where social democracy has been associated with uh, communism. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> let's say uh, one of our uh, social Democratic parties uh, having also been for the Russian mi minorities uh, party, so it was still even the whole you know political uh, spectrum. They were kind of uh, calling themselves social democratic, but then they kind of no no Latvians were kind of vo voting for them because they were associated and they had ties with uh, Moscow as well. Um, and therefore, uh, we've had for three years. Uh, well, 25 years ago, because uh, Progressive we had established uh, five years ago, we've always had this kind of vacuum of real green and uh, social democratic uh, policies and uh, parties. Um, and there, uh, and it was kind of super visible, and I've, uh, uh, me, for example, I never knew how to vote, and I have been fluctuating between the Greens and the Social Democrats, um, uh, because I kind of, what they were in the headline, what I was intuitively uh, what wanting to see in my country, but then um, years and years after uh, every election, I, I, I really could see that no one was corresponding to me. And one thing that uh, kind of uh, what I also learned in my uh, kind of a big takeaway from uh, being involved in Greens is that uh, green policies and Greens are not only, um, uh, they're not only talking about environment. And that was really crucial for me. Uh, they were talking for uh, human rights. Uh, social uh, security, um, and that for me kind of resonated. Uh, it was kind of simultaneously that I was starting being involved in CDN, and then uh, Progressive yeah, had uh, recently uh, established themselves, and they were going more uh, visible. And one of their uh, how we were perceived uh, by a party for the being the gay party because uh, we kind of really advocated for um, LGBTQIA plus rights. And it was kind of, and because our uh, former um, chairperson was gay himself, so everyone kind of, everything else was associated, oh, they're the gay party, right? But for me, it kind of really, uh, it was really bold to talk about uh, uh, queer rights uh, in that kind of time and simultaneously uh, talking about environment and social, uh, social uh, democracy, and we have more... Uh, social democratic backbone at the start of the party. Um, so, I mean, just br in brief, we had al always had this kind of vacuum and, 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 and since then we are still the only left party which does have um, a back, uh, a mi minus, let's say, a drawback. 
uh, because we've always uh, we, we since then and, and uh, still now we are seen as radical um, because we don't have anyone more left than us. So it's really uh, easy for us to margin uh, for everyone to mar marginalize us and marginalize our politics. Uh, whereas I don't think uh, in general uh, we have uh, so many radical um, um, pol policies. Thank you. Thank you for sharing um, the story and with the same question of the brief explanation of the context and the and the founding of the political movement in the party. Maybe we can move on to 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 Serbia, um, to to Peja. The floor is yours. Thank you, Georgi. Hello from Belgrade and uh, thank for invitation. For this, uh, I'm really glad and always happy to speak on CDN events because my background, it's actually I'm coming from Young Greens and uh, I was uh, uh, have I have pretty tight connection with CDN and with FIG and with the European Greens. And I'm coming here as a representative of uh, Nedavimo Belgrade or Don't Let Belgrade Drone. It's a currently political movement which wants to become uh, green political party uh, and I can go back to our time and to, to tell how, how we start and we start in 2012 or 2013 uh, when the uh, current government uh, announced uh, one really problematical urban project to give the uh, really valuable land in city center and to, to completely change spatial plan and to give the, this valuable land to private investor and it's problematical from different aspects from social ecological uh, urban uh, uh, environment and other aspects but i will not keep so much on that and we start to work on that to prevent the debt pro uh, project and we, we tried with all uh, possible legal measures, but they, they, they start to work on that, that. And then during the night, it, during the 2000s, they, they, they demolished some building, our government. Uh, they demolished uh, some buildings in one neighborhood. And uh, we uh, this was start for us and we, we organized a few really big uh, protests. It was massiveness protest in Belgrade. In that time, it was like between 10 and 20,000 people who are protesting, mostly young people on the streets on the Belgrade, but still that they, they continued to, to build that. And we realized it's not enough to be just a citizen initiative that we need to get involved in politics and if we want to change regulations and other things. And, uh, yeah, after the, this massive protest, we, we took part on a Belgrade election in 2018, and we had like something like 3.5% of votes, which was back then under the threshold, which was 5%, but it's, it was pretty good result, actually, for first time, we didn't have almost any... Uh, any structure it was more group of friends than a uh, really established uh, well established organization but we uh, like more than 30000 people in belgrade vote for us and th this gave us hope and we decided to to work even more not to be just disappointed uh, because the, the, that result and to work more and on, not to focus on single issue, but to, to focus on variety of issue because there is a lot of problems in Belgrade from environmental problems like uh, terrible air pollution, uh, no purification of, uh, of waste water and other things to social because in Serbia, it's, uh, it's one of the country in Europe with, with highest inequality and a lot of other social problems. And uh, we decided to, to work on that uh, and also to, to during th that time to build our structures. And after some time, we, we opened the different branches in, in different city municipalities in Belgrade. And also we started to cooperate with other organizations, similar organizations all over the, the Serbia. And in one moment, we realized we didn't establish us, ourselves as green left organization. We realized that this is our values. During the work, we realized that. And we also decided to try to become also part of uh, European Greens and to have much more better 
cooperation with uh, with re regional cooperation and right now we, we have pretty good regional cooperation uh, with uh, Morgemo from Zagreb and with URA and with some other uh, members also of EGP and yeah uh, uh, we we took a part of the election we had the election on three level in Serbia on presidential uh, uh, presidential election, parliamentary election, and local election in March uh, 2022 in Serbia, and in coalition with the uh, other, uh, we would say, green organization, uh, we took part of an election, and we were uh, we uh, we were elected to be now present in the institution because we had like 4.3 on national level and almost 11 percent on Belgrade level, which is like three times more uh, th than last time. And we, we are now uh, happy that we can have some institutional uh, mechanisms to work on that. Of course, uh, we will not be in government right now, but we'll have more mechanisms to push governments to, to work for the people, not, not only uh, for profit. And I will start stop here, but later I can tell a little bit more. Uh, and I, I just wanted to add uh, one thing. Uh, it's hard to be political actor in Serbia because a lot of pressure and a lot of other things, but it's also hard because whole political spectrum is uh, push on the right. And you almost don't have, we, we consider ourselves as green left initiative and we are pr probably only a relevant political actor on, on this left uh, part of the field. Everything else it's on right part and whole political spectrum it's on right. And I, I probably it's similar in also other countries. And this is also one of the, our tasks, how to push the narratives to, toward left. Uh, thank you very much for sharing the story and bringing this this very important uh, point up that the that the whole political spectrum in most of the Europe is starts from either center in the best scenario but usually starts from center right and it goes to right wing and to to, to far right and you rarely meet even a even a moderate uh, centrist party um, no no not talking about the left or like even social cent center left social democrats and of course it's one of the challenges but we'll, the, 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 the the another question i will have uh, for, for you is exactly about the challenges and the main challenges connected with being an, being a politician and being an, uh, involved in politics in uh, uh, in eastern europe so let's let's uh, now continue with um uh with also um same question about the foundations of the party and in political context and maybe from serbia we can move on to uh, uh ge geographically close uh montenegro stefan uh, the floor is yours Thank you so much and cheers to everyone that's that's present and thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry for not turning on my camera. I have a small issue with with my internet connection. It's breaking uh, almost instantly as I turn it on. So when it comes when it comes to URA, it was founded in 2017 and uh, it began as a, as a movement as a civic movement after after the the re after the elections in 2016, where the elections basically were complete, com completely rigged once again by the by the regime in, in the country. So from that point on, Ura was led at first by by a leader who's who was not kind of you know ideologically ideologically uh, colored in a sense where yeah he was civically oriented but nothing special so he was not uh, on the green side uh, or rather he was but didn't realize it so later when when the first generation was switched after the first collapse in the elections which were in 2018 or rather yeah 17 17 18 uh, the leadership in Ura completely changed. So the young people at that point who were Britan and everybody else that you probably know right now they took over took over the party itself and the party was once again reshaped and shaped to become green so we started uh, more or less uh, acting and we were actually a civic moment at that point so we were on mostly protests uh, we were on every civic or, or on every main civic 
uh, event which was in, in the country and uh, we were active in most of the discussions and we were always uh, anti-regime. We, we fought for many things. Uh, our fights began mostly around mini hydro, hydro plants uh, hy hydropower plants uh, around green issues in in the capital city where they were destroying our parks uh it was our one of our biggest battles one was in Ultsin Solana where uh, our regime wanted to build a hotel and um yeah mostly we were pushing pushing and becoming the only party which in itself is democratic that that was one of the in my personal opinion, one of the highest selling points of Fura for the voters is that we were genuinely, genuinely fighting for what we were saying. And uh, we had a really strong democratic, or rather we still have a really strong democratic um, structure within, within the political movement at that point, at that point in time. And that was one of the biggest selling points. So there comes now 2019, the end of 2019, with the new law which was proposed, which was proposed and pushed by DPS about uh, regulation of of the church or or not only the church but but of the whole system surrounding the churches and stuff. So they pushed this law which was discriminatory towards some some of the some of the religious organizations in the country. And then the massive protests came. Those protests were pushed and backed by the Serbian Orthodox Church inside of the country, and um, Ura was obviously against against the the law, which was uh, discriminatory. And that's that was one of the one of the biggest movements towards the democratic change towards the democratic change in the country. But Ura's Ura's fight itself had the biggest peak uh, in 2018 with the biggest protests in the country at that time they were called um oduprise or rather resist and that that's when uh, when and one of the government officials was basically bribed and bought or actually took money from a private private company or private banking company owner in, in cash, in dollars, and uh, that's when when most of the people recognized Dura as a rightful fighter for justice, equality, and and gr basically green ideology. And um, at some point of time, Dura actually applied to become a member of the European of the European Greens, and Dura uh, initially initially was accepted. And uh, all, I think the 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 yeah, Ura became officially a part of the European Greens two years ago. And uh, back in the elections of 2020, uh, Ura was the only political party which was not fighting. You know, uh, we were not directly fighting DPS uh, and uh, we were not directly conspiring with the other people from the opposition, but we were offering something new. We were offering a new value in our country. Uh, something that that people could recognize. We were led by the young people, they, mostly young, let's say. And uh, one of the biggest selling points which we had was the fight against crime and corruption, the new green wave of doing things, and uh, the that we also promised because we were at that moment we were aware that without a bigger coalition we could not probably overturn overturn and and bring dps down we were aware of that and we proposed an uh let's say experts or more or less technocratic kind of government in the future and our campaign was mostly targeting young people we were the only we were the only political party that actually actually mostly targeted only the youth but we had like this original approach in it where we were not like targeting everyone okay come and vote us but go out and vote because we were aware at that point that abstinence on the elections is one of the biggest issues which a green party has and we were aware that our our you know voter base if it's raining outside they would not come out and vote so that's why our campaign was mostly oriented towards social media young people uh, all of our gatherings and political events were most were mostly uh, aimed towards engaging engaging young people to go out to go out and vote, 
and uh, at the end of 20, uh, at the end of August uh, 2020 we actually won the elections what was was something as as our our president's calling it a game game changer we were we were that that tip on the scale and uh, basically ura had the right to make another govern to make a government and that's what we did we made the first government which was mostly technocratic technocratic like government but that government at, at the end of the day did did not feel all of all of ura's expectations where other parties were starting to meddle with what's supposed to go on in that government the the uh prime minister of that government was also really closely related to the church and uh, mo mostly uh, the same situation from the past from the 30 years in the past was repeating itself they were only switching with the dps they basically wanted to become the new the new rulers of the of the country that's why we decided to once again uh, overturned that government and now make a new government, new minority government, or rather pro-European government, where URA took the position of the prime minister and to and uh, the positions of three other three other minis ministries: ecology, economy, and uh, the third one is um, hmm, European Integration Ministry or European European uh, Office and uh, that's that's now and now we have seen like in, in the results from yesterday's um like uh, all the criminal activity has been dropped down to, to a really smaller level than before the the whole process in law and justice has become become to to speed up a bit and we are looking good towards european integrations at this moment so I would say that's enough for an intro, and I will add more as we as our discussion goes on. I'm sorry if I took too much time. Thank you, thank you for uh, sharing this very impressive story of a party that founded just few years ago, and we are seeing uh, well, first have a green prime minister in Europe, and I think that's a very big, th very big thing. <laughs> Uh, so we, we can now move on to to, to Caucasus, um, and maybe we can uh, continue with with uh, a story from Turkey: how the Green Party founded there, a new Green Party, and why. Um, and to brief us on the, on the political context as well. Koray, um, you can join us. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the time confusion. Uh, since our government stopped adjusting the clocks, the time was wrong, even though I was checking it on YouTube. YouTube Pro wrong. Sorry again. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm Koray. I'm the co-spokesperson of the Green Party. Uh, I'm 37 years old. That's so young. Uh, after this brief introduction about myself, uh, I would like to give some information about the Green Movement in Turkey and Green Parties in Turkey because uh, uh, although the Green Party of which I'm the co-spoke person, it's not even two years old. The history of the Green Movement in Turkey goes back 40 years. Uh, in fact, we are the, the third Green Party in Turkish history. Uh, the party that existed between 1988 and 94 was shut down by the state. Uh, the party between 2008 and 12 closed itself down by merging with another party. Uh, I was a member of both the second Green Party uh, and uh, merged party. After all, we founded the current party in September 2000, 2020. Uh, now uh, we are like two years old. Uh, there have been various stages of the Green Movement in Turkey. It's actually possible to uh, associate each stage with a party. The first Green Party uh, was a part, was founded on the basis of environmental struggles, and thermal power plants, the protection of marine life, especially uh, sea turtles and seals, uh, urban struggles were the permitted issues of this period. Ties with local communities were established in this period, uh, and the foundation of the environmental associations, which exist in every province even now, uh, were laid in this period. 
Uh, the mission of the Second Green Party was democracy and cooperation with the European Union. Although now far away, uh, at the time Turkey has a had a goal of uh, democratization and full membership to the European Union and uh, regal, legal arrangements uh, were being made in this regard. The Second Green Party was a party that focused on this goal. Uh, here, of course, it's necessary to add these te themes uh, were put on the top goals of the first party, not instead of them. Uh, because ecocide projects such as the, the destruction of Turkey's northern coast by hydraulic power plants came to, came to the agenda during this period. Um, our party, third green parties, focus on the climate crisis. Our slogan is, our house is, is on fire. We will uh, put out this fire. Uh, of course, this was something we said for the climate crisis, but we are such an a terrible economic crisis that's it also continued with that issue in turkish uh, we are saying fire in the kitchen for the cost of living our kitchen is on fire we will put out this fire with the green new deal we said uh, of uh, and again of course i have to say this uh, similar to what predrak told us uh, there was a very very strong urban movement in Turkey since uh, 2013. The struggles that emerged after the Gezi Park uprising inspire us. We are in them too. We are uh, mutually uh, nutrient uh, us. Uh, I think this is our history. Uh, maybe I can go on later. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we can move on to the most uh, Eastern uh, Eastern European country that we have on, on the panel, to, to Georgia. And I think the youngest political movement out of um, what we are here. So if you can brief us on how the movement was founded and to, to also give us a bit of a political context of, of, of Georgia. Okay. Can you hear me? Great. Uh, thank you for your invitation. I'm really happy to be here with you and uh, change my opinions here. Uh, briefly, I'll start about Georgian Greens and then I'll move to context regarding uh, political movements in Georgia and regarding the uh, government situation. Uh, Georgian Greens, we are established in 2008. We split uh, from the main Georgian Green Party because of uh, discord <laughs> and conflict because we believed that they didn't follow really green values and this is our story maybe you have heard a lot uh, about other countries as well is the same uh, and since then we positioned as a movement and as a non-profit organization and currently we are in the transition stage that means that uh, we are moving to become a political party we are in the process of uh, like um, uh, um, collecting signatures and uh, supporters and getting ready to upcoming or extraordinary elections and so on so uh, the, we are quite in a um, backdoor and bureaucratic work now in Georgia, but uh, it's a must. It's a must for Georgia to have a progressive uh, green uh, force uh, that promotes values that are not promoted by other parties. We choose three priority and uh, that is based on data and research. This is, of course, environment and ecology. The second priority is education and third one is minorities and diversity uh, issues. Uh, regarding the mm, uh, political context, of course, uh, Georgia is under influence of um, neoliberal way and neoliberal thinking and government is, as, as uh, you mentioned, Justine, it's the same, uh, like business interests, oligarchs, so on, so I will not go deeper in it. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to point out certain things about movements in Georgia because I think we should uh, base um, and use other movements' experience. Um, here I would like to propose a new term. It's, it's complete <laughs> completely my own and uh, it's, not, uh, it's just a theory, not tested in practice, I don't know. In Georgia we uh, can find very few movements 
would, I would call it more like a thunderstorm than a movement because it uh, creates one day and it disappears the second day. They are not very, uh, not very uh, at all sustainable uh, um, like uh, uh, force. Uh, so they are very spontaneous. They are very reactive and then internal discord and conflicts come and uh, then they disappear. The second type of movements that we have in Georgia are like professionalized movements that is completed with like activists, experts, uh, and it's more like an NGO and not a real um, a movement. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, <laughs> in order not to be volatile on a political market, uh, the movement has to like integrate both uh, horizontal and uh, vertical structures. Uh, you, uh, of course, should apply bottom-up approach and you need to be open and also you need to have structures where those people and supporters go. So those two are, of course, the co at the core. Uh, and uh, it's not an easy job <laughs> to balance those those two integral um, uh, parts. And uh, also it should be said that some movements, and I also rely on data when I'm saying this, uh, we are successful when people felt ownership to this movement. When they felt that this we are, um, they were really participating in the movement and they, they were really change makers, not just invited. Uh, persons, uh, participants. Uh, so, um, in order, uh, uh, like, um, to realize our dreams, um, uh, we should. I, I would admit that it's not about only people and only activists, uh, on the only persons. It's about also about uh, momentum because movements are the products of uh, social uh, developments. In Georgia, we had uh, some cases, but I think I don't have time to elaborate on it about, uh, do I have a time? No, not. <laughs> Maybe during questions, I will uh, go deep. And the four uh, Georgian Greens, um, yeah, I, I will resume here, I think. We don't have time. Uh, for us, Green Wave is an alternative uh, we, we think that we should propose really policy-based alternative, not just resistance. So this is our um, like uh, uh, primary goal, not to be just only resistant uh, oriented, uh, but also policy oriented. Because in Georgia, 99% of uh, political parties are like this, that we don't like. So we want to be more mm, professional. And and uh, let's see what comes, and I would be uh, happy to to uh, accept questions from the auditorium in the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very all, all of you for for briefing us on the on the context and the story of of your political parties. And I think I will try to now beat some up before moving to the other question because I think there was a lot of things which are similar and which are repeating as a pattern in, in all of these contexts and uh, all of these mm, stories of the founding the Green Party. And uh, well, first of all, it is, it is focusing on the policy which, which you just uh, mentioned, that we see that in many Eastern European countries the, the policy and the content of the political debates are either non-relevant or completely absent from the political debates, like it is in, in Georgia, for example, or, uh, uh, or it before was in, in other countries. Um, and at the same time, the, the, the issues have been also very, very similar what we just heard, right? We had power problem of the hydropower, uh, problem of the uh, urban issues and the uh, wrong development of the cities, neoliberal development of the cities where the city doesn't care about the people but is fully oriented on, on a very few who own a lot and it is very car-oriented and not taking into, uh, into account the, the social policy in the inner city and the, and the green mobility and so on and so forth. Um, and um, yeah, this is, this is something that, that is there um, as, well as, um, as well as the absence of, of, of a similar kind of political entity in, in a country. So there is a space for, for the Greens 
in a political landscape to to take and i think this is this is happening uh right now but of course this this everything is connected with the challenges uh, it it is not easy as we said to to be green in in eastern europe uh, we 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 don't have much to cooperate when when the greens got first time in the in the political landscape very soon in, in western europe they very soon they realized that they have someone to cooperate with i mean there are social demo democrats who can shift a uh, bit to the green. There are liberals with whom it is possible to cooperate. There are even conservatives with whom it is possible to cooperate because they they come on a compromise. But in most of the Eastern European countries, we don't just um, not have these political entities who are close to the greens, like social democrats, who are open uh, and don't have this very shady uh, background, like in most of um, our countries with connections to Russia and uh, with corruption. And we know how social democracy sadly functions in Eastern European countries in most of the cases. But also, um, we are faced in a, in a political landscape we don't really have, uh, we cannot really build alliances. We are um, almost alone there. Uh, and not just that, but we are faced with a authoritarian uh, tendencies in, in in the countries, be that in uh, Turkey or in, or in Serbia, or also in Montenegro, but also in in Georgia, Latvia maybe less. Um, um, but this is not to be taken granted. Uh, yesterday we were talking about how Hungary, which was pretty democratic in the 2000, just turned into almost full scale authoritarianism. But now to to not not to talk too much myself, uh, we can move on maybe to the challenges and uh, uh, what were the main challenges on its way for uh, for your political organizations as such, but also on a personal level, why how challenging it is to be part of the of uh, of a green political family in in uh, in Eastern Europe. And uh, maybe briefly also, if, if you could have, what, what are the best takeaways from your uh, activism and for, from your um, engagement into political, um, political life? Um, so, yeah, let's maybe start uh, this time with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Peja from Serbia and we can make a circle um, again. Okay. The I didn't hope that I will be first. I, I start to writing answer. Uh, actually, for us, for us right now, it's uh, we are in process of transformation. We want to to become from one uh, movement to become political party, and this is really problematical process in, in Serbia and as probably everywhere in Eastern Europe because people don't believe so much in political parties. Uh, they, 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 they have much more trust in the movements and how to, to, to bring back the, this trust into political parties and into the, the, the structure. But also uh, we are now in process and we are thinking how to, uh, to, to, to structurate th this party and it's how to build parties Party, which is not like classical political party with all same uh, structures, but to build party which is like uh, with one leg in institution, with other leg in uh, uh, in activism, which German Greens with Petra Kelly try to do that, but they, they, even they are not good example because they they fail to do that also. Even they are right now in government, they, they, they took some other pathway, but uh, there is no so. No, not so many examples of that and you know with growing a number of members it's always challenging how to keep this uh, internal democracy and democratical process because for us uh, democracy is one of the basic uh, values and we, uh, to open a process and to uh, to have everyone involved and because that we, we are not acting in here in belgrade as traditional parties and for some decision we need more time because other political parties, and we, if you compare, compare, uh, you have cooperation with them. They, they they want you to act quickly, and they always uh, accept from uh, from us uh, to to act quickly. And they don't understand uh, the, the, that we have democratical the, the decision making bodies. And th this is pro uh, some of the challenges and also challenge if you want to, uh, because right now we are mostly based in Belgrade, which is capital of Serbia and like third population of Serbia live in Belgrade. But if you want to, to, uh, to be relevant to national level, you need to be uh, 
present on national level, and it's much more harder to do uh, pol politics uh, in all other cities beside Belgrade, because Belgrade is metropolitan area and it's two million people almost lived there, and it's much more easy to do whatever you want than in, in smaller cities where people are much more afraid and under the threat, actually. And um, for us, this will be a big challenge, how to build structure in every uh, town and in every village, which is necessary if you want to grow as a political party. And also how, how, how to integrate other structures. For example, we still don't have youth organization because most of our people are still young, but actually we realized that we missed a youth organization because our uh, voters are not so young. This is big also because whole political pro uh, system in Serbia, but mostly for us voting people who are between 30 and 40, something like that. People who are already have the, their families and their value a little bit more like uh, urban open space, public space, uh, public infrastructure and other things. And actually because whole retraditionalization of society in Serbia. Mostly young people are that they, they, they are voting and they are supporting uh, far right and right wing, which is also it's uh, it's not problem up to them. It's up to us how to change and how to 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 show them that uh, like green left it's perfect alternative, which is also problem because we are not offering simple messages uh, because you know when you talk with uh, right that they always have the, the simplest uh, message it's us and them and uh, like we are good and they are bad and uh, word is not not so simply like like that and uh, yeah but it's also up to us how to create narrative how to people to recognize that environmental problems that uh, uh, poverty that climate change are biggest threat of our society no not migration or uh, some other people uh, th th this is also challenging uh, for us and about good story i think it's good, good story that we, we still exist and uh, as colleague from from georgia told we saw a lot of movement who who were appearing for some time and th th they have a single issue movement and then people fight and th they, they stop doing any kind of politics and stop being relevant. And actually for us, it's I think it's important that only few people left from, from our movement in last like seven, eight years, which is really great and because it's also the, the, this leftist scene in Serbia, it's really separate and people are fighting all the time, but we, we are still managing to keep together and to growing. And actually it's also because the, this democratical process, even if you have some kind of uh, structure or a hierarchy it's better to show people that we have that and to democratically discuss about that than to create this informal higher hierarchy because a lot of times we are pretending uh, like we greens like we are completely democratic and then you have a position of power where you have uh, not still still some people who are holding power and it's mostly also uh, men's and uh, it's the, 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 this is the question how to, to solve uh, I will stop now here to, to to leave space for others to tell thank you um yeah from uh, from there I think we can move on to Georgia and then to Turkey uh, with the with the challenges um, and especially I think it it, it goes also with this the democratic uh, condition of the of, of the country where it is um, sometimes not safe to do politics as uh, Pedro said especially when you go out of the capital cities uh, but also what uh, we can you can put input on on other challenges and what what you see are are the main challenges already here but also maybe even ahead what are the challenges to to come and maybe we can start with Sopo and then uh, continue with uh, Korai. Thank you. Um, as, for, as for Turkey's political envir environment, uh, Turkey is a country where environmental struggles are strong uh, but uh, green politics is a bit translated. 
uh, we see that Western ideologies and Western views still have difficulty in uh, entering the country. Uh, Turkey does not have a liberal party, as not, does not have a social democrat party or a conservative party like Western, uh, like Western, um, Western parties. There is a, there is always a Turkish liberal party, a Turkish social democrat social democrat party. Uh, that's why we are struggling to take root and this is one of the biggest uh, struggles we have to overcome. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, we have overcome. Uh, as a party, we believe in the tri triple crisis definition, social crisis, economic crisis, and the ecological crisis. But right now the social crisis and especially the economic crisis is being felt so intensely that the climate crisis in, is unfortunately lagging behind. Uh, this is a big uh, challenge that we need to overcome. Unfortunately, people who suffer from hunger do not have a very strong perspective on ecological problems. Uh, in Turkey, uh, the minimum wage, uh, the minimum wage in Turkey right now is around 236 euros. Uh, this is in incredible impoverishment. Uh, this is an incredible imp impoverishment and prices are constantly rising. Uh, educated young people uh, are going to European countries. Posts like Turkey lost a doctor, German gained a an employee are now the basic TV and our social media. Uh, the government has exited the Istanbul Convention uh, which it named after itself. Unfortunately, the murders of women cannot be prevented. Uh, prides are being banned. The rainbow flag ha has started to be criminalized in Turkey. Uh, all of this based on anti-democracy, of course. Uh, that is why being a Green Party in Turkey does not only mean being an ecological party. We need to fight on every issue in every aspect, and we are trying to do so. Uh, when we think about everything together, uh, we have to succeed as the Green Party in Turkey. Uh, we have to stop being a country with a collapsed economy, a country that is going backwards in terms of the environmental and a country where, where people don't want to live. And uh, the way to do that, in my opinion, it's only and only green politics. Uh, the anti-democratic process is also uh, affecting our party, directly our party. In Turkey, an organization that pursues a pro-LGBT policy and has good relations with Europe has only uh, one title in the eyes of the state, potential traitor. Uh, another challenge is for us, uh, electoral, electoral law. Uh, Turkey has uh, 81 cities. If a party wants to be allowed to stand for election, uh, it has to hold a venue in 41 cities and about uh, 300 districts. This is a huge economic burden. Uh, if you don't have a rich uh, people behind you, it's impossible to even get media co coverage in Turkey. Uh, also, the election threshold is uh, 10%, now down to 7%, a big uh, challenge for the democracy, our democracy. Uh, Georgi uh, talked about uh, Hungary and autocracy. Uh, we were very hopeful about the Hungarian election, but it ended badly. We need to uh, re reverse this in Turkey. Uh, we need to form an alliance where all opposition opposition's parties unite and as the Green Party, we should give our color to this alliance. Uh, we are facing 20 years of a government with strange projects uh, ranging from the construction of a nuclear power plant to opening a new Bosphorus. Uh, they are only trying to keep economy alive by attacking the environment. Uh, they are trying to keep the economy alive uh, by pouring constraint and asphalt. And this government needs to change completely. Uh, we must defeat this right-wing populist autocratic government. Uh, Turkey has not uh, 
has not a good uh, democratic view now, but uh, we want to change this. Thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this very, very challenging um, uh, thing that are coming from 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 Turkish uh, government, and we hope for the change. Um, now we can move on briefly to to Georgia and the challenges. And I think what we heard is also kind of repeating. There's things that are so similar, like in in Serbia and Turkey. I think in Georgia as well. It's the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Um, I jotted down some challenges. Uh, first of all, um, uh, fear of politics is higher in the society. Fear of being a member of political party or being involved in democratic process and participate. And uh, also social movements or political movements um, do not want to enter into politics, even, they, even though they have higher chance um, to be elected. Uh, as Peja mentioned, it's, it's kind of one dimensional and uh, single issue protests and it might have only one uh, dimension, like I don't know, only ecology, only, I don't know, uh, culture or something like that, and they lack other dimensions that is important um, for the political movement. And this is may, might be also related to general um, lack of political culture and people don't want to participate. And also I would like to highlight some about um, uh, challenges regarding building alliances with the similar groups. Because in Georgia, other leftist groups think that we are not left uh, enough, we are irrelevant, uh, uh, we don't uh, read Marx and we don't understand it, and um, uh, the, so 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 it's it's really hard to collaborate with them. Uh, I hope it's not only the case in Georgia, and uh, of course there are structural and institutional uh, barriers like financial uh, barriers to find fund the political party and so on. I want to go mm, deep into it. And also the issues we promote, uh, we live, uh, Georgians live in a very conservative country. Uh, and uh, we Greens should admit that uh, we will be at, at least at the first stage in a very minority because we openly like promote gender and queer issues and so on, and this uh, will be a uh, challenge, and our activists might be under threat when we enter into a political scene. Thank you. Um, thank, you thank you very much. Um, and yeah, maybe we can move on to, uh, to Justine now, and then Stefan. Yeah, I think uh, I will start with the kind of challenges we have for progressives, but then I will go back to what I've heard, uh, which is really similar about the lefts not cooperating. Um, this, I think, the one of the challenges. I think what will we can see uh, for other parties as well that have been already in uh, governments is that scaling up is really hard especially from the context when you have no good coalition partners, then you scale up and you go from la local, level, um, local level party to a national one, you have to start making compromises. And then, f especially for us, um, uh, we have our mission, <laughs> our challenge is how to be more, uh, le people don't see us so radical, even though we are rather uh, uh, progressive, uh, not radical, but I mean. Um, and then, um, and how to make compromises, how to build this kind of uh, more grown-up uh, out outlook and while still staying on the left side and be being true to their politics. And this is really, really hard. And it, that does go in inner, inner structures and inner uh, discussions as, as it goes for compromises in a political level. Um, uh, one example uh, what we've had uh, in our discussions is how uh, vocal should be, we, we, we should be about LGBTQIA plus rights because they're not popular. I mean, it hasn't been popular any in like any time. But like, but now we are growing, and we need to get you know grow to a national level. Uh, and then maybe we shouldn't be so vocal about it. And you know, these these kind of conversations come up, and that is a big challenge uh, to um, all political parties. Um, but one thing I want to say, uh, yeah, about the kind of global challenge we are now. Um, you know. Um, Econ economy, global economy is really going down. 
um, the uh, heating and uh, all the prices, uh, prices for food is are surging up, and that means that it's a ripe time for um, uh, right-wing and populist movements. And the challenge is how the Greens uh, in Eastern Europe and in Europe grab that, how they com com communicate with the uh, citizens and uh, have a proposal, uh, a policy proposal, a political proposal for, for, their, uh, for them uh, and uh, be yeah, understandable enough and be... Uh, and that go towards right wing or whatever wing uh, populists that come up in I've been mean, in every Eastern European country uh, like every half of a half a cycle of uh, elections, and and that's and that we can see in the history when the lefts have been scattered authoritarians rule, and uh, in, in this, this sense because we are approaching really kind of a, a tough time in in kind of global and regional economy it's really really nece necessary for us to stay and make a broader coalition, and that we've been doing here as well. Uh, coalition building is really, really important, so we can see that in Hungary they kind of missed their opportunity to be uh, like united left uh, or united whatever, like a broader co coalition, and then when it's too late, it's, uh, you know, then you kind of, uh, we look and, uh, you know, where we do go from that. And on a personal note, I mean, you asked to, to uh, maybe takeaways. Um, you know, um, it's really hard when you start uh, uh, doing politics. It's about uh, teamwork in the sense that in the lo lo local uh, and in, in your own party, uh, which is super important. If you don't have coalition, if you don't have good uh, relationships with uh, with your team members, you cannot do change, make changes uh, uh, in a, a broader context. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's for new people, for new young people to come to politics, you kind of go from, yeah, we have to build coalitions and we have to do compromises to, to doing so many compromises, you are kind of, for, you forgot how, why were you, were you um, in the government, why did you, uh, uh, um, yeah, I wanted to be a politician and got, got elected. And this is something I've been personally struggling a bit, uh, being a year and a half in local city council, how to take back my agency and stand for what is a progressive city and don't back down and be, yeah, I mean, there are lines we shouldn't com um, compromise and shouldn't internalize as compromises then, because at the end of the day, if you compromise too much as a green, uh, young green force or progressive force, then why are you there? You know, we have centrists already. Thank you very much. And I think this goes now very well with, uh, with the question to Stefan, which is about the challenges, but about compromising as well. Because URA is part of the government for all the several years, and now not only part of the government, but having the minister of the prime minister. So maybe, Stefan, you could share w with what challenges this is con connected, uh, first of all, but on the other hand, what what it brings, why is it important? So yeah, the the floor is yours. Well, the best answer to that is like where to begin. Like the, there is there is too many challenging challenges on every front. I would say that like our our biggest challenge is our our growth. Like that that should that could be really our one of our biggest challenges at this moment because Ura is in this weird weird position where we are you know in the government we have the prime minister our party is growing quite rapidly but we are still in that process of becoming a proper political party. Other than this, like the challenges before were kind of similar to, to every other party out there. Like the, we, we basically shared common, common, common challenges, I would say, with everyone here. And uh, one of the biggest things which we realized quite fast is that we have to represent the green idea as not only ecological, but uh, mostly human rights based, uh, social based and uh, everything that goes with it. So basically we were trying to teach people that the green idea is not only, you know, not letting somebody cut a tree. That was that was how it was perceived in the beginning in our country that we were a bunch of, you know, crazy people not uh, letting letting investments go in. But we were actually but we actually taught people that, you know, uh, those investments are not necessarily good because they are destroying something which has a much bigger worth than 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 a hydropower plant, uh, in a sense. So that was one of the biggest challenging challenges at the beginning, differ differentiating that part 
that part and showing that green green politics are actually quite diverse. Um, I would say in the in the parliamentary elections, one of the biggest challenges which we had were like um, eternal party structures. We we basically were something similar to what Nedavi Mogograd told us that that you know it, it's really really tough to have a hierarchy and everything. So one of our perks as a political party is that yes, we do have a hierarchy on paper, but we are kind of mostly chill about it. We we are kind of you know we don't see it as serious as some other parties see it. So. That's one of the biggest uh, biggest things with us because that's what actually drawed a lot of, a lot of people in because they saw that you know okay this is not that rigid I could influence it and that has uh, that right now at this moment that seems to be one of our biggest challenges because we had a huge influx of people like at the beginning we had like what around 2,000 members. Now we have over 7,000 and a lot of those members don't know what the green idea actually represents. They are there because we are a part of the government and they are there because we are we have a prime minister. And yes, we, we are in the government for the last two years, but that, that taught us a really important lesson uh, that, you know, democracy is all is all about compromising at the end of the day but but this is a really important thing not compromising uh with with your core values so we as a political party will never compromise for a solution which is uh completely out of context and completely far away from our core core values but we will compromise with some things which will you know get you one step closer to to becoming truly a green country uh, one of the ideas is you know you have this grand vision if you can get to it with leaps then you know go and do it but if you can't you have to do it one step one step at a time you know that's like one one part of, of politics everything is a process of of doing it of engaging with it and and that's what one of the biggest lessons which we learned like, and we have seen, like, as a party which got 5% on the elections in 2020, uh, we have seen, you know, 5% in the parliament can't necessarily vote for everything. Like, you cannot push everything to go through the parliament, but you can definitely try to build some alliances. Our position in everything was quite a bit easier because we, we were that steep on the scale and uh, basically others came to us and you know we were the biggest influencers in that voting part but um, right now we have seen that everything everything takes time and that eternal democracy in everything is really important and one of the biggest challenges is as i said coming from a movement which we were we were basically a movement to a political party we are right now in between and like we're at this edge, walking down the edge, basically between two really huge nationalistic blocks in the country who really want to crush us down because we are taking taking the taking their power away, and uh, we have to figure out how to push our voter base more towards green ideas and green ideologies as well. You know, the and. Uh, we have learned that only hard work and you know dedication can give you can give you some results and you know having some fun with it helps a lot and we one of the biggest challenges as well is uh, i would say you have like in every part in every political party basically that has ever existed you have like you have like three generations the first generations are those who make the party the second ge generations are those who take places within the government or within the party. And the third generation is the generation which kind of steers the ideology. And uh, I think that Ura, is, Ura in, in its really short period of time, actually managed to switch between two generations and now the third generation is coming in. And I would say that this is one of the most important things and this is one of the most important challenges that our party has to face is uh, basically we have to find a way 
to empower our youth and to give our youth enough power to steer the ideological boat of the next generation. And like, when you go and analyze the biggest potential of green parties, uh, the biggest potential of our voter base actually lies within the age of 16 to 18, not 18 and above. And that's, that's one of the things which we have to realize. And uh, I would say every party on the Balkans, especially I would say in Bosnia, uh, we have to see that potential that the, the next cycles will only see the green movements grow and grow more. But that's the biggest challenge because while growing, you have to figure out a way not to be drowned down by that growth. You know, when you have uh, in Ura, Ura has a main board which now has 120 people in it. Well, actually, currently it's 70, but it's going to be 120. If that 120 people does not understand properly what green idea and green ideology is because of the huge influx of the new members, then you have a problem. Then your political party kind of tends to wingle around and lose its focus. And um, yeah, we are actively we are actively working on, on on that as well. And also by being a part of the government and uh, being a party which everybody calls a traitor or a betrayer or whatever they have called this many names because we have always voted for good solutions and not for the so and not based on the party which they come from. You know. A lot of parties in Montenegro have this tendency not to vote for anything because it comes from, for example, URA. They will not vote it only because it's ours. Mm -hmm. But we have shown people that we truly only value good solutions for our country. And um, that's one of the problems because uh, bigger parties which m with many more funds tend to target us as the enemy, let's per se, as the enemy. And that's, that's a really, really strong issue. And that's an issue of every Green Party, because we are always kind of in between of, of these fighting dogs between us. And we only want to show that our country can progress and can go to the future. And uh, as now having a prime minister, those attacks have started to rise up quite a bit because we are now tackling the criminal enterprise as well. We are, go we are slowly but surely uh, destroying the criminal monopolies, which have been in our country for centuries, you know, and um, that's that's it. Like fighting the negative narrative, which mm -hmm. comes to us, is only going to be fought off by showing proper results. Like we have seized 3.5 tons of cocaine. We have seized uh, 400 or almost 300 million euros worth of cigarettes, which were completely illegal. And those are the results which are showing every voter in the country, not only the Greens, that, you know, things are changing with the new wave. And thank, also thank the you. biggest challenge is how to do <laughs> for other parties. Sorry cool. for Thanks. too long. Yeah, th thank you a lot. Um, thanks a lot. And I think it's time to to open up this space for, for the questions from, from the audience. I think we have some around 15 minutes left until the end of our, our, our panel discussion. So the floor is yours to the audience. Um, we can give, take, um, take a, sec, um, a minute for, for you to think about it. And maybe I will ask the last question meanwhile so that there is no awkward silence. But uh, yeah, there is already a question. So no need for, for the mod moderator to jump in. So yes, um, the question, Theo. Has a, has a question, I will, I will quickly bring you the microphone. Uh, thank you very much, my name is Theo, I work for the European Greens and uh, it was very inspiring to hear your speeches. I think that they show uh, very concretely what the Prime Minister of uh, Montenegro said uh, at the EGP Council, that nothing is impossible. I, um, I have a question that is a bit of a reflection on what you said so far in the beginning. You said that uh, you highlighted the importance of momentum and you said that uh, movements are products of social developments. Um, and I would like to ask all of you on the panel, what momentum you think is important right now? Um, or rather, what should tomorrow, what social developments should tomorrow's green movement be a product of? It can be a very short answer of one sentence or you can develop more if you want. Thank you very much. Maybe we can take several questions and then answer, uh, answer together if there is some more questions from, uh, from the audience. 
or we can start answering and then um, we can have another round. Okay, I see no more hands for as of now, but I hope there will be uh, while we will finish. And I hope briefly we will have uh, one more. Maybe let's let's take just one minute to answer this question. Very interesting question. Um, yeah, we can start with uh, Stefan. Mm, I would I would like to answer shortly. Innovation. Uh, that's where I see the future of all green movements, like us actually pushing innovation in, in terms of you know young people starting their own businesses um young people going out and and figuring out the problems of the future innovation because that's one of the biggest issues of europe you know um they have this say in the business world or rather in the startup world that uh, innovation comes from the united states uh, then it's uh, being built in china then the Europeans regulate it. So the European, the, the, the whole European future and the green future is definitely pushing for new, you know, innovative ideas and innovation because that leads to more, I would say, liberal and social society. That's a short answer. Thank you very much. Um, Justine, would you go next? Well, first of all, great question. <laughs> Um, I would say power and power dynamic and power system restructuring. Um, I know I, I, I can see that happening uh, when we like in what's happening in Russia when how we are calling we are receive, perceiving uh, countries that are not democratic. Uh, democratic. Uh, we can see how we're re restructuring and realizing how we're energy dependent on on gas and. Um, and coal, um, and I think if we want to restructure uh, our society in a green and just transition, there has to be kind of complete overturn how we are work, uh, working with things and how we are cooperating, involving citizens. And I think this is kind of a, uh, a way I, I would like to see. And in, in, in looking at what uh, on a city level as well, uh, I just was in the conference and everyone was start talking about like how we have to um, co-develop a city to make it sustainable. But then I'm thinking and I'm working. I was I had been working as an urban planner. Now I'm a politician, and then I, I know that these structures are not meant to do that. And then the big question is how do we make our structures, uh, the processes, uh, reflect that uh, the the things that we want to. Uh, involve and that we want to involve citizens and uh, direct uh, involvement and democracy is not only put uh, as a as a headline but also implemented uh, in our uh, work thank you um maybe we can continue with peja mm, thanks Theo, for this question now, it's great uh, question I, i'm also thinking a lot of time about that because you know we are not living uh, right now in time of movement. It's already past. I, I would say we had the rise of the movement with Indignados, Occupy Wall Street, and all other uh, things. But now movements are slowing down. Also, I would say even uh, climate movement are slowing down. The, the, there is not so much uh, things right now around uh, Fridays for Future or Extinction Rebellion. They are also slowing down. And I'm not sure what is the next thing. I mean, maybe it's political parties and they need to, to, to bring something new. But also, I think it's for me, it's really sh shame that we didn't use better hold this situation with COVID. Uh, but th this situation also show us something. There is no old uh, normality, but also that states can regulate a lot of things that the, uh, we had a really big state investments and really big state uh, regulation over uh, market. And th that market is not only solution that we can also not nationalize healthcare or uh, train system, which is the, 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 the in uh, in Spain or in UK or in some other countries. And then we can also use the, these mechanisms to, to have regulated economy and to, to, to prevent climate change and to, to, to reduce inequality in society. Thank you. Um, Sopo. Okay. Uh, I'll try to talk about Georgia and uh, worldwide as uh, well. Uh, momentum can always be here. Everybody knew that uh, Europe should not buy gas and energy from Russia. 
but uh, we uh, acknowledge and realized uh, it much more clearly when the war started. So it was like a momentum, maybe. Uh, okay, we know that hundreds of uh, people die out of air pollution and cl climate change every year in Georgia, maybe. Also, I don't know real, real data, but um, this doesn't uh, tell anything. Uh, it does not, um, how to say, touch the hearts of people, so it's not a momentum yet. But uh, when the people organize against uh, HPP giant hydropower plant uh, and uh, this protest lasts uh, almost uh, one and a half a year and uh, people uh, like occupy the territory and they are squatting and this they are very resistant and consistent and it was the case in Georgia, and uh, finally government canceled the contract with the HPP constructor company. So, the 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 how to say the goal was reached, but I think they this movement did not use the momentum. They did not become a political force. So uh, it's it's really I don't know about maybe political in intuition, also structural and strategic work. But this Russian example is clear. But I don't know what happens in in uh, what should happen uh, uh, in Georgia in order to have a um, uh, momentum. Maybe also we can push uh, a bit uh, to uh, create uh, this momentum. Thank you very much. And the last input from uh, Koray before we take another questions. Uh, thank you, Theo. Uh, if I have to speak for the green movement in general, uh, we need to maintain a constant state of being visionary. Uh, they support what we say. Uh, they support our policies. They will support them, but we uh, I mean, they, uh, the other parties, right or left wing. Uh, but we need to be more idealistic and more visionary. Uh, this is how can we make progress. Uh, we should not be the fixed leg of the compass. Uh, we should always point to desire, desired destination. Uh, for Turkey, the most important issue uh, is to move to simple democratic governance. Uh, and for the Greens, it's uh, to get stronger. Uh, uh, our roadmap uh, from now uh, on, uh, on is to strengthen both the X and Y axis, uh, to grow in numbers and increase our influence. Because um, in a Turkey with a strong, crowded Green Party, democracy uh, cannot be an instrument that can be given up so easily. Uh, it's in a country where the Green Party is strong, governments cannot easily choose Putin or Orban as their partner. Uh, in a Turkey where the Greens are influ influential, uh, ecocide projects cannot be pronounced so easily. Our forests burned down last summer and the government did nothing for a long time to put them out. And uh, now ugly hotels are spr springing uh, up in the burnt uh, areas. Uh, this cannot be happen in Turkey where the Green Party is strong. Uh, that's why our roadmap is to increase our influence and numbers. Uh, our momentum must be this. Uh, it's, it is of course important uh, for the main opposants to speak our words, but uh, it's much more important to speak our wor own words uh, in parliament or uh, the councils. Uh, Turkey and Greens uh, cannot remain a country, Turkey uh, especially, cannot remain a country far from modern democratic values, a country that uh, continues to commit crimes against climate, a country on the wrong side of this story. Uh, we will change this. Our uh, momentum is that. Thank you very much. Um, I think we are very short with the time, so um, but I think I, I also really want to answer this question and follow up on what you just said, kind of also summarize. But I think the momentums are always there. I mean, momentum is 
now there, uh, even today. There is a momentum on the energy, for example. There is a momentum of the very fast transition and the convincing people that we need investments into renewable energy as soon as possible. But the issue is that momentums are there, but momentums not, don't create movements from zero. There should be already some kind of a pre-prepared prepared structure and a movement that will capitalize on the momentum. And I think that is something something to build on, to, to have a movement that will be there uh, to respond on the momentum that is um, that is at the, t at, at the time uh, happening. So if there is uh, any last questions uh, to the audience and then we can um, finalize. Uh, no more que no more questions. Um, thank you very much for for being with us in these uh, pretty difficult times, as uh, uh, as we said for many times uh, already. Um, and well, pity that CDN doesn't have a communications officer who would be now sitting somewhere here and tweeting everything which has been said, because there are so many things like said here that that can really become a very important quote to, to remember and to have in mind while, while doing, uh, doing politics. Uh, and I see Peja wants to say some, uh, some uh, final words. And yeah, Peja, floor is yours. Uh, thanks. I, I'll be really short, like 10 seconds, because we, will lot, uh, we talk a lot about compromises and how we need to compromise. And I'm not the biggest fan of compromise. And I was always, uh, when I was in, uh, in youth, green youth movement, I was against compromise and I was for uh, for red lines. And especially when you are young, you don't need to compromise so often. You need to be more radical and to push even if you have your mother party or, uh, uh, or you, uh, some older movement to push them to be more radical. Uh, because if you start to compromise with 18, this is will be problem because we cannot compromise with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Again, as something to quote on Twitter, I think, and to have in mind. <laughs> uh, definitely, not compromising too early and not compromising on the values. And I think these this past years have really taught, uh, taught us uh, uh, those, those lessons. Um, importance of compromise also, but importance to know on what to compromise, what, what really brings us uh, to, to the change. Um, do you want to say something? Yes, so I think the speakers want to say some final words. So I think it's time to make a one round for every speaker if, if you want to say something in a minute to make a, a final remarks. No, I just wanted to say build coalitions and just stick less to uh, compromises. Cool. Uh, Corey wants to say something uh, in, in 30 seconds. Sorry. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation and uh, for this opportunity. Uh, and I want to say, uh, please come to Turkey and uh, call us uh, and we are talking with face-to-face uh, -face with these issues. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. And Stefan, do you want to say something like last remarks in 30 seconds? Yeah. So one, one thing, young people are the change in this world. Green parties are the change in this world, but young people are the change in the green parties. So keep pushing on forward for new visions, new, new ideas, and, you know, compromise. Don't compromise with your values, but try to be democratic. That's all. Thanks a lot. I see a lot of agreements in the, in, in the audience as well. Okay, I think I'm saying th the word thank you a lot, a lot. So, <laughs> last, really last remark. Thanks a lot for, for the joining uh, the session. Um, do you want to say something? Last word. Last word, okay. Um, one of the MPs uh, at the EGP Council some three days ago told me that don't, don't think about rights and lefts and think like this and be focused that greens are forward you go forward so this was a really really inspirational word by polish mp at egp council so this for me means that uh, to adhere uh, adhere to values be 
visionary and um, do the teamwork. So, thank you. Thanks. So, we move forward. Um, the green is the project of the future, which is, but it, it is already here. There's a long, ch and there's a challenges um, ahead which we have to overcome. Uh, but I think it is our responsibility, and especially us as, as the young people, to, to stay radical, to compromise at the same time, and to push for the green, green transition that we need if we want to survive on this, on this planet. So thanks a lot for the joining the panel, but also the whole conference, those who have been watching us online and those who have been uh, attending. I think the, 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 uh, the discussions that we had here uh, will contribute to, to shaping our, our ideas in the coming future, because we are, ch we are living in a very changing world. Things that were, were, were there, um, a month ago is, is not there anymore. We are living in a world where uh, the old is dying and the new is not born yet and the traditional formulas uh, doesn't work. So we're living in a very uncertain time, but I hope this uncertainty will bring, uh, will bring the better, more democratic and more green future. So thank you very much for, for being with us and let's continue fighting for a better world. Thanks. <laughs>